Okay, Roger, Dodger Roland. Yeah, so, you know, the whole idea about Roger Rave is, you know, on these dictations on the video, this is personable, and you know what? It saves me a lot of time from typing this stuff up. In fact, it kind of helps me to be able to think and to organize and to put this together in a fashion so that, you know, let's say either me, you know, I don't have someone who's a typist, I don't know any time in the future for anybody but he's going to type this stuff up, but, you know, it pretty much have to be me. And uh, I've got all the Roger Rave articles from Lost Anarchy magazine, and it's a really big file. A lot of the um, dialect was intentionally spelled in such a way to, um, to create an accent. You know, like, gee, that, they don't do that no more. You know, stuff like that, you know, some, some sort of phonetics. You know, but there's some stuff in there that's, you know, misspelled, you know, so, and that's a really big file, and I was trying to get that together because I was encouraged to get all the articles together and that we publish a book. And so, uh, and basically the whole idea, and every time I talk to Keila, she goes, okay, what's your story? What's your story, right? You know, hey, we want to see your story, <laughs> you know, it's kind of like, uh, I don't know, uh, what, what is that? Uh, mommy dearest on steroids. So what I'm kind of thinking, you know, the doctors never told me what she had. You know, if they would say anything, they would tell you anything that you would already know of, like depression. Oh, okay, depression. Uh, schizophrenia. Oh, schizophrenia. Bipolar. Oh, how about Tourette's? Okay, so there's something, it's actually called Cortis. Right? And people, they go, I've never heard of that before. And of course you've never heard of that. It's so scary that they keep this thing under the wraps. In fact, if I try to do a search on that right now, I tried to look it up before. There's not a lot of information on it, but it's probably to protect the patients. Like, if things are going okay, things are going well, you know, there's no real reason to really let anybody know that someone has got some sort of an issue that is like out of this world, you know? I mean, it's just really kind of unfair. You know, I guess it's just a personal proprietary information, you know, to protect the individual. So that was probably what was going on. But, you know, it's like uh, she gave us ice cream for dessert for after dinner one night, right? And this was a regular basis. What we used to do is mix it up really fast and make it soft so that we could eat it because it was too cold, it was too hard, it was too stiff. You know, she's going, hurry up, hurry up, hurry up, eat your ice cream, go to bed, go to bed. It's like, why do you even give us ice cream? And the thing is, you can't say, Mama, I don't want any ice cream. Can we, can we just put this in the refrigerator? You cannot do that. That would have caused such a big problem, you know. But uh, I guess apparently she didn't remember she gave us the ice cream, either that or she was just blowing our minds or something. But like the next second later, she gives us the ice cream, we go out in the front room. She comes out there and she is shocked that we're sitting there eating ice cream when it's bedtime. We're already supposed to be in bed. It's way past the bedtime. What are we doing ice cream? She doesn't remember giving us ice cream, right? So this was on a regular basis. And uh, I guess uh, when, our, uh, when my stepfather first moved in before they got married and stuff, he was, uh, you know, they were taking that, Stirring, stirring it up, making uh, ice cream soup as, you know, probably something we shouldn't be doing. It's more like, you know, killing time or something. We're going, no, it's so we can eat it faster. It's too cold. It's too hard. It's bedtime right now. You know, we mix it up. You know, so basically, you know, I go, well, she always, you know, comes out, eat your ice cream, eat your ice cream, go to bed, hurry up and go to bed. I don't know what you're doing eating ice cream. You know, so, you know, this was on a regular basis until that happened, so that changed, you know. So if you're actually really talking about someone who's like someone's mother, and she's trying to raise some children, you know, they probably didn't want us to know that she has, you know, some uh, memory loss, you know, or she's kind of sick, or she's got this really, really scary thing going on, you know, or, you know, most likely, you know, my dad kind of seemed to want to keep it high profile. We went into a, uh, we were doing a construction job site. It had five houses and had the construction booth there. And uh, he went in there and, uh, you know, he, I went along with him. Apparently, he uh, didn't remember getting paid. And, and, you know, of course, you know, it's uh, $3,000, you know. 
and uh, there was still some more money to give them. This was still just uh, you know the installments and stuff. You know, usually you get a deposit so that you get the materials. You know, and then you know you need some money to to, to keep the operation going. And then when it's finished, you know, he'll get the rest of it. You know, in the end. And uh, going Roger, you know, his name is Roger. I'm Roger's junior. He's Roger senior. They're going Roger. We had already given you your check yesterday. And he's going, you didn't give me my check yesterday. Did I see you yesterday? He's on. So he opens up his wallet and he looks and he sees where his check is, wherever he goes, no, it would be right here. If I had it, you have not paid me. But, you know, he was at the bar last, last night, the night before, you know, and uh, had spent the money and didn't remember. He didn't remember getting paid, didn't remember spending the money, you know, and they go, Roger, Roger, listen. Um, he said, what day is it today? You know, and that was the thing. He always gives you a day and a date that's, you know, not today. You know, he, uh, he said, Roger, that was like about a week ago, you know. And uh, then, uh, and then he, uh, he did uh, raise his voice a little bit that they were having this discussion with me present. You know, that, you know, that wasn't so cool, you know, that... You know, he was put on the spot and proven wrong in front of the son. So, you know, that's uh, when I kind of realized that, you know, there might be something kind of going on. I don't know exactly what, you know, or who's at fault or what, you know, if it's a big misunderstanding or a small misunderstanding. You know, but there was these, uh, you know, the different, uh, the whippings we got for this presence that we got from Grandma Honey at Christmas. They thought that we were lying. They wanted to know where we got these things. You know, we, uh, and the erector set, you know, a metal erector set that has a bunch of nuts and screws and bolts. And if you take that stuff out of the case, that stuff starts getting bent up. And then there's all these nuts and bolts and, and washers and stuff laying around. It's like, what are you doing all these nuts and bolts and washers? You know, well, they were in the case and they were in the box and now they're just loose with all this stuff. Yeah, now it just looks like a bunch of hardware. It doesn't actually look like a children's erector set. You know, things that you build a little thing, it has a little more, you make little robots or whatever. You know, kind of like Tinker Toys, you know, but they're little metal rigs, you know, you have the little wrench and stuff, you know. And, uh, You know, they thought we were lying. But, uh, you know, my mom even gave us uh, cake and brownie mix for my sister's Easy Bake Oven, and we had that at the apartment before we moved the house. We moved the house, you know, and, they're, uh, and we're there for about six months or so into the house that we had these Christmas presents from, like, since Christmas. Now, all of a sudden, they don't remember anything about it at all. And I uh, thought we were lying. We actually got beatings for these things. And they were going, where'd you get them? I mean, severe beatings. Where'd you get it? Christmas, Grandma, you're lying, you're lying. Well, I'll tell you what, if I told you anything else, it would be a lie. We're telling you the truth. They got stuff from Grandma. You know, so, you know, this kind of thing, you know, it goes on and on. So we're t saying that, you know, she's pretty much unfair about anything and everything. You just couldn't make the connection. Just pretty much ruined the, you know, the family comfortable environment, you know. And, you know, I used to get up at 4.30 in the morning. Basically, I thought this was pretty cool and pretty tough. You know, I was definitely developing my muscles and stuff. You know, at 14 years old, get up at 4.30 in the morning, go do a couple janitorial buildings and the Shakey's Pizza Parlor in the morning. And then I had the other two buildings, office buildings that I did at night. And then go back over to Shakey's Pizza and uh, bust the tables and, and close the store and, then, you know, and go home. And I thought it was cool. I was rolling in the dough. I was making the money. I thought it was, you know, pretty cool. You know, I heard of certain things like kitty labor or, you know, if this is illegal to do or something is under the table, you know. The thing that my mom said about that is I was not allowed to have breakfast at home. But I had my own money, you know, at school I bought a milk and a cinnamon roll. You know, I did think that was kind of weird that, you know, I'm not allowed to have breakfast at home, you know. Well, boxes of cereal is kind of expensive anyway, so one bowl doesn't satisfy me either, you know, at that age, so. You know, I, I was kind of thinking maybe that's what the issue was, but I used to make like a, a, an omelet and put some cheese on omelet and stuff, you know, before. So, you know, breakfast was off limits to me, you know.